everybody, it's Michelle, and today I've got for you a Pilates reformer workout using a small ball. So the ball is going to give us some good kind of instability to challenge our core, our arms, our whole body, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So let's get right to it. We're going to start with a single red spring on. Keeping it light is going to get into the abs. Okay, so lay on down. You can have your headrest flat. And we're just going to start with one strap at a time. Okay, but before you grab your strap, I want you to lift your hips up and you're going to place your ball right under your sacrum. Okay, and you might have to kind of test it out to make sure it's in the right spot. If it's up too high, your back will feel super arched. If it's way too low, it'll feel like you're too tucked under. Okay, so you want to feel like you can be pretty neutral directly on top of it. Okay, and then very carefully, you're going to reach back and grab one strap. Make sure you feel stable. And then you're going to place a single foot into that single strap. Okay, now place your hands on the carriage so that you're not going to go rolling off of the ball. And then you're going to bring both legs to tabletop. Okay, so just spend a few breaths here to kind of get used to this feeling. It can be a little disorienting at first on top of this wobbly little surface. So on an exhale, you're gonna straighten the leg that has the strap on it towards your foot bar, and then you're gonna bring it back to tabletop. Yes, so breathing out as you stretch the leg, inhale to return. Yeah, now again, we are on these very light springs, so it's not gonna be super intense on our legs. It's more about keeping our balance on the ball, finding some stability and working our abdominals a little bit. Yes, yeah, so if you can see your legs, make sure that you're reaching right out in line with your hip. And this tabletop leg is trying to stay really still. If it's wobbling around, you can place your palm against it to give you a little something to push into. All right, now pause with that strap leg long and you're gonna float your leg up to the ceiling and then drop it back down. Inhale to lift, feel a nice stretch on the hamstring, and then lower. Now, if you're feeling super solid and balanced on the ball and want to test yourself a little bit, feel free to take one or both hands barely off the carriage to a little hover. Don't take them too far away, yeah? Just close so that if you need them, you can press them right back down, okay? But that's just another element of testing our balance here, okay? So now, press the arms down. I'm gonna use my hands for this one. Draw half circles with that strapped leg. So you're gonna drift it out away from your midline and then bring it back in to lower. It's almost like you're drawing like a capital D shape with your leg, okay? And the further your foot goes from center, you'll feel those obliques super challenged on the opposite side. There we go. Let's do that a couple more times. Inhale on that first part of the circle. Exhale to return. All right, now let's reverse and go the other way. Really be in control of the spring. So make sure you're not just kind of riding on them. Make sure you're nice and slow. The slower you go, the more it's your muscles moving the carriage rather than just the springs carrying you. All right, let's do two more. Try not to move that tabletop thigh. All right, now pause with the leg in line with your center, and then we're gonna bicycle the leg. So now finally the free leg gets to move a little bit, reaching and switching. That's it, good. Again, the spine and the pelvis try to stay stable so that the work can really be in the hips and the legs, okay? Now, if you find yourself getting a little wobbly, slow down and come back to your breath. Find that stability, there's no hurry. The slower, the better. All right, now pause with your strap leg straight. Reach your free leg to the ceiling. Now we're gonna kind of switch roles. The strap leg is gonna be the stabilizer. So squeeze the glute and don't move it. Now the free leg is gonna drop as low as it comfortably can. Now you're gonna bend your knee like you're dragging your toes along the floor and then come up lower and then lift. If you're, in, if you're gonna touch your foot bar, maybe flex your ankle on the way down. That way you should avoid touching it. And lift, good. So you can drop this leg as low as you can without moving your spine and you'll get a nice stretch on the hip. You can drop it beneath the strap leg. All right, now let's reverse. So bend the knee first, scoop the toes down and out and lift, down and out. And lift, so good, let's do three more. 
and up. Try not to let that rope move around too. And last one. All right, now last thing here, pause with your free leg up and we're gonna scissor both legs. One up, one down and switch. Inhale as the strap leg goes up. Exhale as it pulls down. Good, and again, with these light springs, it's easy to kind of rush through it, but if you really slow down, you'll get that full benefit of being in these positions under load at end range for a longer period of time. All right, let's do this two more times. Try not to feel any side to side movement in the spine or the hips. All right, now on your last one, Come in and just place your free foot on the foot bar. If you wanna take a quick little stretch for this top leg, you can pull on the rope. <sighs> okay, and then we're gonna switch legs. So make sure you feel secure, slip the foot out, and then we'll switch for the other strap here, okay? All right, so if you need to adjust your ball, if it moved around, this would be a good time to do it. And then let's do the other side. So we push out. Hands find the mat, we tabletop the legs, and then for the first couple, it's gonna be our strap leg that's the mover, yeah? And now that we've done this once, you can start adding some things in, like maybe the float of those arms, if you wanna challenge your core a little bit more. That's gonna make you have to slow down for sure if you don't have your arms. That's it, good, let's do that a few more times. My ball is a little off center. So anytime that ball feels out of place, you can give it a little adjustment. All right, now pause with the leg long and we're gonna float it up. Try to leave your tail kind of curled around the ball and then pull down. So as the leg lifts, try not to smash the low back to the carriage. Yeah, so we're as neutral as we can be on top of this ball. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Good, yeah, a little pressure of the hand on the thigh could be helpful if your tabletop leg is moving around. Yes, all right, so now next we do our half circle. So you're gonna circle the leg away from your midline as you inhale and then down on the exhale. Good, check in that that strap knee isn't hyper extending. Make sure it's just slightly, slightly micro bent. All right, now let's reverse and go the other direction. So we lift the leg, circle around and in. That's a lot of work for that inner thigh to return the leg. And then also for the obliques to not get pulled off of the ball. Whew, so good. So just the one leg's the mover. The other is still last one. All right, now pause with the strap leg forward and we're gonna bicycle. Good, so find your range. You can reach your legs as low and as in towards your chest as you can keep your neutral spine. So find where that is for you. Very good. Coming back to your breath pattern, in through the nose, out through the mouth. <clears throat> All right, now pause with that strap leg straight. Free leg reaches to the ceiling. Now we're gonna flex the foot, drop the leg down towards the springs, and then drag the toes in and up. Yes, the flex of the foot is optional, but it feels pretty good, and it'll ensure that you don't hit your foot bar at the bottom. Good, now it's deceiving. This is the leg that looks flashy, right? But really, the challenge is on this other leg to not wobble around. So if it's too challenging, you can lift the leg a little higher and that might be more helpful. Now let's reverse it so the knee bends at the top, scoops and lifts. Bend, scoop and float. Yes, yeah, so that's a lot of work for that hip flexor. You get a nice opening and stretch and then lift. Two more. Last one. Ooh, all right, now from the free leg reaching up, we scissor, one up, one down. Good, it's getting a little harder. This hamstring is a little more tired now by this point. Inhale and then exhale. That's it, all right, let's do two more. 
So good, last one. Now take your free foot to the foot bar oh, and then grab the rope to give a little stretch to the back of that top leg. Oh, very nice. All right, take that foot down. Carefully, you're gonna have your both feet on the foot bar, lift your hips up, sneak the ball out, and then once your tail comes down, just kind of drop your knees from side to side. All right, now we're gonna come back to being on top of the ball, but we just need to adjust our springs a little bit. So I'm gonna increase to one heavy and one medium. So a red and a blue, if that's too much, maybe do like a red and a white, or even just stick on the red, okay? So here we go. So adding on just a little bit of weight, since we're gonna be using both arms, we can handle a little bit more springs. So lift yourself up, place your uh, sacrum back on the ball, and now we're gonna grab both straps. So a little trickier, because now we're not gonna have our arms to support us on the mat, okay? So make sure you're moving very slowly and deliberately here. So once you feel stable, into your neutral, reach the arms to the ceiling and put just a little bit of tension on the strap so that your carriage comes away from the stopper and then float one leg up, find your balance. And then when you're ready, bring the other leg up to meet it. And again, we're just gonna start by holding here for a second. Get used to this feeling of having no arms to support you. All right, now when you feel ready, you're gonna press your arms straight forward, circle them out to the sides, and then reach up. Good, exhale to push, and then inhale to circle around. Very good. So find a nice big circle, and again, slow movements are gonna be our friend here. So no sudden moves since we're on this unstable surface of the ball and with the carriage moving underneath. Whew. All right, let's do one more circle in this direction and then we'll reverse. If you have two loops, you could always switch to the longer loop if you need a little less resistance. Yes, or you can reach, uh, come off the ball and change your springs if you need to switch it up. Whew. All right, let's do that two more times. Now the trick is to try not to let the legs move around. They stay solid and the arms are really the drivers here. All right, now you're gonna pause with your arms down next to your hips, take a breath in. Now, as you exhale, I want you to just straighten one leg forward over the foot bar and then come back to tabletop. And then the other leg, switch and then in. So just getting used to now the legs starting to move. So every time we move an extra body part, it takes away from our stability a little bit, challenging us further. All right, so now we're gonna add the arms in with this leg action. So when I straighten one leg, I want you to open your arms out to a T and then return to tabletop and pull down. Inhale, one leg, two arms. So good, inhale and then exhale. Very nice, reach and then return. Let's do one more time on either leg. Very good. Now, can you pause with your arms in a T and do fast bicycles Ooh, without tipping over? Five, four, hold the arms strong, two, and then finish by coming to tabletop and pulling the arms down. Oh, okay, bend your elbows and set your feet on the bar to take a little break. Very good. All right, next position, the arms are gonna reach up. Okay, you can rest against the stopper or to make it more challenging, push into the straps a little extra. Now, reach your legs straight up or as straight as is comfortable for you. Now, all I want you to do is drop one leg over the foot bar and then lift it up. So the arms are the stabilizers and the legs are the movers. That's it, all right, a few more times and probably burning under those arms a little bit, holding on to the spring tension. All right, now, Kind of like before, we're gonna add in an arm movement here. So as we drop one leg, I also drop my two arms straight down next to the ball and then lift back up. Exhale to lower, inhale lift. Very nice. So keeping the legs close to the midline to stay balanced. Good, now if your top leg comes too close to your body, you're gonna lose a lot of the ab work. So 
have the top leg vertical or even a little further from you. All right, last two. So good, last one. Now pause with your arms up and do fast bicycle. Switch, 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 switch. Good, stay centered on the ball. Three, two, one, and then place your feet on the bar. Wow, very good, you guys. All right, we're gonna do one last arm position. So we're gonna do tricep presses. Elbows come down by your ribs. They can set down on the mat, that's a little easier, or hover, which is more challenging. So now we float the legs up and then just start straightening and bending the elbows. Ah, oh, very good. All right, so if this is enough challenge, you stay here. If you want a little bit more, reach one leg straight and just hold it straight for a couple reps. So getting some endurance for the abdominals and for the front of that leg. All right, now let's switch which leg is straight and continue. Find your rhythm, really squeeze that upper arm. Very good. Now for the last few, if you'd like, two straight legs, and maybe the legs have to come up a little bit higher. That's totally fine. Let's do four more. If it's too intense, scale it back. Three, two, and one. All right, find the foot bar. Hang your straps up. <clears throat> Lift your hips off the ball, just like before. Oh, and then let your knees go from side to side. Massage out that sacrum. Very good, all right. Roll yourself over to come on up. Nice work, you guys. So next we're gonna do some kneeling arm work facing the side. So drop down to a little bit lighter. Let's do just a single blue spring. So whatever your medium tension spring is. And then get up onto your knees. Uh, the further away you are from your shoulder rests, the heavier the resistance will feel. So that's an easy way to change up the spring tension. And if you don't feel comfortable being up on your knees, you're welcome to sit down instead. So grab a strap. If you have two, start in the shorter one and see how that feels. And then you're just gonna pinch the ball between your two hands, kind of line it up with your sternum and really squeeze it from both sides so you feel your pecs and shoulders working. And then all I want you to do is just reach the ball forward and then back to your chest. And there really won't be a ton of movement on your carriage, just a teeny tiny bit. Yeah, so leave the ball centered with your body as you reach forward and back. Very good. Now feel your ribs staying stacked on your hips. Feel like you're pulling up out of those kneecaps, nice and tall. Now, instead of reaching the ball out straight, pass the ball up a little bit higher on the diagonal and down. Like you're trying to put it on a shelf that's a little taller than your head, yeah? So now the carriage will move a little bit more, but still the ball tries to stay centered with our body. And then down, so good. Let's do that two more times. Reach and return. Last one, reach and then return. All right, now leave the ball centered with your chest and just twist towards your foot bar and then twist away. Exhale, rotate and then return. So the ball just kind of gives us a little bit of feedback for what our arms are doing, gives us a little extra work for the pecs and the shoulders. Now, if this is too easy, you're welcome to make a bigger circle. So have the ball a little further from your body as you're doing this twist, or you could even have your arms all the way straight. That's a little too crazy for me today, but you could absolutely have straight arms oh, as you go side to side. Ooh, that's not easy. Yeah, let's do a couple more here. So you decide how straight you want your arms, or even if you want the ball nice and close to you. All right, let's do this three more times. Twist, last two, and last one. Oh, very good. All right, pause. Next, we are gonna stir the pot. All right, so we're gonna do bent and straight arms as we rotate. So bend the elbows, face towards your pulleys, now, we're gonna twist with bent arms first. As I make it to the foot bar, my arms are straight, and then it's like my abs and shoulders are the brakes, slowing me down as I return to the start. Bend the elbows, twist, 
and then a big slow circle of those long arms. That's it, good. A few more times, around and then through. Around, very good. Let's do one more in this direction and then we're gonna reverse it. So pause with the arms long, shake it out if you need to. Facing the pulleys. Now this one's a little trickier, so really feel those abs strong before we even start. You're gonna twist to the foot bar with straight arms and then bend to come through. Straight arms to start. Ooh, that's trickier. And then bend and come through. So good, couple more times. Make sure you don't compromise the rest of your alignment just to do the circle. You can drop to a lighter spring if you need to. Last one. And then relax, very good. All right. Next, or last thing we're gonna do on this side, I want you to take the ball, and if you can see, I want you to place it back right in the curve of your neck, okay? So back behind you, and then once it's there, you're gonna grab onto the ball with both hands, and you're kind of sandwiching the ball between your neck and your hands, okay? It actually feels really good to kind of support the neck and the head, and you can really press back into it to get a good alignment for your skull. All right, so now once we're here, feel the ribs drawing down, and we're just gonna do half of a side bend towards our foot bar, and then come back up tall. And then do that again. So we just go from vertical to our lateral flexion. That's it. So it's work on the way down, but then it's also some nice work to come back up to straight with control, kind of in that eccentric lengthening phase of the movement. Now, with the ball behind your head, you really do have to put some force back into it to make sure that your head isn't getting jutted forward. Yes, so it's really good for kind of bringing some awareness to our head and our neck. All right, now pause at the top and let's go full range. So now I want you to side bend towards the shoulder rests and away from the shoulder rests. Inhale and then exhale. Keep a tight grip on that ball. I know it's tiring on the arms. Good, so the hips are strong and it's really your rib cage that's moving off of that midline. Last one. All right, carefully bring the ball out from behind you. Hang your strap up and we'll do that on the other side. So just turn yourself around, grab your new strap, ball centered right on your chest and then we'll start with those forward reaches. So straight out and then in. Keeping as much squeeze on the ball as you can all throughout. Yes, yeah, so, so good for those pecs and shoulders to get that little bit of extra resistance. Okay, now maybe start passing the ball a little higher, like you're putting it up on the top shelf. That's it, good. Feel nice and tall. Make sure you're not jutting your pelvis forward. Should be stacked right underneath the ribs. All right, now last one. Bring the ball to your chest, and let's start with our rotation from here. So you can keep the ball close to you. That'll be the least intense on the arms and shoulders. You can take it a little bit further away with the elbows still around, or you can have your arms all the way straight. That is the most challenging option. So pick what's working for you today. Make sure your eyes are following that rotation of the spine. All right, now we're gonna stir the pot. So twist towards the pulleys, arms are bent. We're gonna exhale, start the rotation with bent arms and reach and then slowly circle around. And then we're back to where we started. So it's an exhale as we reach, inhale to circle around. That's it, try to keep constant tension on the ropes. We're not yanking or pulling, but it's nice and smooth. All right, now pause and we'll go the opposite direction. So arms are straight first, a little more challenging Ooh, on those abs and shoulders. Arms are long. If you feel like you're smacking into the stopper too soon, scoot a little further from the shoulder rest and that'll kind of balance that out. All right, you guys, let's do that one more time. Oh, and then take a rest. So good, all right. So now ball is going back behind your neck, okay? This is good, you'll have a little better view. So make sure your elbow goes in front of the rope and then you kind of press the head back into the ball, 
Whew, should feel really good to get the back of the body a little awake. Now we go side and then back tall. So towards the foot bar first and then lift. Good, so keep that connection of the head into the ball the whole time. Sometimes when we side bend, we end up drooping our chin and rounding forward. So having the ball here is a really good way to make sure we don't do that. All right, now let's go all the way full range towards the shoulder rests and then towards the foot bar. That's it, so good, side to side. Get as much movement through the side body as you can. Last two. Amazing last one. All right, take that ball out and then come on down. All right, next let's go up to a red spring. If you're struggling to return the carriage, add on a little bit of extra spring. So lighter is definitely harder on this next exercise. So we're gonna do some elephant stretches with the help of the ball. So I want you to stand up, hold the foot bar. You're gonna have your heels a little bit away from the shoulder rest. Usually we touch them, but not today. You're gonna put the ball between your ankles and you want it high up enough that it's just barely not touching the fabric of your carriage, okay? So bring your feet however close together they need to be to get a good bite on the ball. So if your ball is smaller, your feet will be closer together. All right, now wrap all 10 fingers, even your thumb around the foot bar. Lean your weight more into your legs than into your arms. All right, now let's just do a few kind of classic elephant stretches here. I want you to push away, leaving your heels flat on the carriage. And then as you exhale, pull the feet back under you. Okay, so now the only difference here is we're probably in a little bit narrower stance than normal and we have the ball there to get a little more connection to our inner thighs. Good, so the shoulders stay really strong. The shoulders are the stabilizers, so they're not the movers. The hip joint is really opening and then closing. Good, you can take a peek at your knees. Make sure they're looking straight forward rather than rolling in and looking at each other. All right, now bring the carriage fully back and pause. Don't move the carriage and just lift your heels and lower your heels, okay? As you pick your heels up, see if you can squeeze in on the ball even more. If you feel like you need a little more force into the ball, you can scoot your feet closer together. That's it. Now try not to rock your body forward too much. I was kind of doing that. So don't follow me. Keep your body pretty still. All right, now I want you to Start with the heels flat. We're gonna do our elephant and lift our heels as we push out. That's pretty tricky. Drop your heels when you come back down. So again, it's all coming from the hip and now the ankles, and then we lower. So you might be able to get a little bit of bigger range now that we're taking our heels off and then pressing them down. <sighs> lift. It's a little bit of a different sensation. Yeah, feel nice and active up and around that hip. Glutes are working. So good, you guys, let's do two more. Now press out and just leave your heels up. Come in with high heels, push out with high heels. Good, the tail really pikes up and then push away. Now you can continue with your back flat or if you'd like, you can round your back to get into those abdominals a little bit more. Exhaling on the return, inhaling to push out. Very good, you guys. Let's do three more. Feel like you carve out through the spine even more when the legs come in. Two, and last one. And then place your heels down, very good. All right, you can come down to the carriage to stretch for a second. Oh, the ball's kind of there for you to sit on, that's nice. All right. So next, we're gonna do flamingo, which is basically a one-legged elephant. Um, if doing this with the ball is just not happening today, you don't have to, but it's kind of a fun element. Getting into it with the ball is a little tricky, okay? So you might have to be creative. Just be careful as you're doing it. So stand up first. The easiest way that I have found to get into this is to set up my back leg first. So the one that's gonna be my supporting leg, we're gonna go high half toe with our heel against the shoulder rest. 
Okay, now if your toes are too close to the shoulder rest, it's gonna work against you. So have kind of a medium high half toe. Now, bend your knees, you're gonna tuck the ball behind your other knee, kind of clamp down on it, and then pick it up really fast, okay? Now that's really hard to do, but I believe in you. So now I want you to squeeze your heel towards your seat so you have as much pressure on the ball as you can, and then try to even out your weight between your two hands. Now to start with, my leg that has the ball is gonna try not to move, which is a little bit trippy. So it stays with the knee looking at the floor. And then again, it's just very small drifts of the bottom leg. So elephant, not plank is kind of the range you wanna think, okay? So maybe like five or six inches out, five or six inches in. Now, if you'd like, you can go into a full on plank and pull your knee forward pike back up and push the knee to the ceiling. So we're kind of doing little bicycle almost switches down and then lift. So slightly bigger range with that straight leg and then we're allowing the bent knee to move. So good you guys, let's do two more. Now on your last one, pause with your carriage touching the stopper and your hips high and we're just gonna do little glute presses with this back leg. You can flex your foot if that helps you feel the back of the leg more. All right, now let's do fire hydrants out to the side. Whew, almost done. Fire hydrant side, try to keep your pike, that's so hard. Three more, two, one. Now come down, if you drop your ball, it's okay. We'll pick it up again. Whew. And then come on down, so good. That little ball makes those so much harder. All right, let's do the other side. So put your new heel slightly elevated on the shoulder rest, tuck the ball behind your front knee, clamp down. Oh, this is the best part. Whew. Don't drop it. Okay, so my knee points down, my toes point to the ceiling, and then I just do little drifts with my supporting leg. Yes, yeah, so my hips are staying flexed the whole time, at least for now. My tailbone is pointing at the ceiling and my bent thigh tries not to move. All right, now the next level, if you would like, is bigger range with the straight leg. Pull the bent knee in front of you and then press so the knee tries to look at the ceiling. Switch and switch. So good, switch. Take that as slow as you need to on these light springs. This is a lot of ab work. Let's do three more. Yes, yeah, so we're flexing the hip and then extending the hip as much as we can on that ball leg. Now pause in your pike with your back leg up to the ceiling and we're just gonna drop the knee and press. Drop and press. Try not to let your carriage move. Two, long back. Now we'll go with our fire hydrants and then we're almost done up and down. So good you guys, four. Three, two, one, and then come all the way down. And if your ball falls, no big deal. Wow, amazing job. All right, we are gonna finish with a stretch. You can use your ball for this stretch if you'd like. You don't have to though. Uh, if you are, place it against the shoulder rest and then we're just gonna do standard single thigh stretch but with a little bit more quad focus. So you can leave your springs on one red step to the floor like you normally would. Now typically we go foot against the shoulder rest, but for now I want you to place your kneecap up against the ball. Now make sure the ball is kind of wedged tight to the shoulder rest so it doesn't move. And then think of pulling your heel towards your sitting bone and you're gonna get a good thigh stretch. So now we'll just sink down and then come up. And you probably won't move very far, not nearly as big of a position that we normally get, but it's a little bit more targeted. If you can grab your foot, feel free to kind of pull it towards your glute. The ball just kind of makes it more comfortable than your shins not right up against the shoulder rest. Okay, and then if you like, you're gonna pull the carriage in, lift your toes off the floor, and just lean over the leg to get more hamstring stretch. Yeah, see if you can pick your toes up off the floor. 
can even let your head hang all the way through your arms. Whew. All right, move your ball, move your body to the other side. So as you set it up, kind of like pinch and roll the ball in there, that way it's nice and secure. And then the closer you get your kneecap, the better to the ball. Okay, so maybe kind of pull your foot a little bit. Now try to shorten up your abs, lengthen out your thigh, and then do some nice little presses. Very good, you can flex your foot, point it, and grab it. All right, and then pull the carriage all the way in. Sit your hips back over the heel, lift your bottom toes, and try to fold for a hamstring stretch. Maybe let your head go. All right, excellent job, you guys. Thanks so much for joining me for that reformer workout with the ball. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave me a like, leave me a comment if you have any feedback or requests. Uh, if you haven't, please subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications, and share this video with a friend. And I'll see you next time. Bye.